All right, we're going to talk a little Alabama football, a big one up there in Wisconsin against the Badgers. We've got Drew DeArmond on, host of Talking Ball on Huntsville's 977 ESPN, also tighter insider contributor, also co-host of BAM's podcast. Um, you you kind of do it all, but man, how you doing today? Good, TJ. It's great to be back with you. It's going to be an interesting road trip. It's the first for Kalen DeBoer. Uh, Nick Saban, his mantra and his kind of his uh, signature was, in my opinion, his road record and the performance that his teams consistently put out uh, on the road from 2008 going forward. Everybody knows 07 was a little bit of, you know, having to, you know, re reset the culture. But from 08 going forward, either on a neutral field or on the road, Alabama was unbelievable under Coach Saban. And it'll be interesting to see how Kalen DeBoer's version does. I mean, this will be an interesting roadie. Um, you know, I, I respect Luke Fickle a lot. You know, as, as everyone knows, in 21, Alabama had to play them in the in the uh, Cotton Bowl and in, in the semifinals at Cincinnati. And he did about as good a job as you could do there and decided to leave and go to Wisconsin. He's in year two, went seven and six in year one, um, trying to kind of change the way they play a little bit. Still physical, uh, but maybe a little bit more of the throw game involved. They've got a quarterback that you and I are familiar with. Tyler Van Dyke's been around. Um, you know, been at Miami. Um, he's a little bit of a, a pocket guy, which usually in the last 20 years, Alabama's had a lot of success against. They had a little trouble with Byron Brown again from South Florida last week and his mobility. This will be a little bit of a different deal. But also Alabama, as you know, offensive line was in flux last week. Um, you know, what kind of shape will it be in? And that'll be kind of the key to this game because if Alabama can handle Wisconsin up front and get off to a quick start, I just I don't think this Wisconsin team even is even as athletic as South Florida. Now I'm not saying they're not a better team. I think they've got a good coaching staff, but I, I like Alabama's chances here if they can play clean. So backing up a little bit to that USF game, pretty pretty close game. I actually live in Tampa, so people yeah. around here were uh, super tuned in, and I think even even though it kind of got away late, um, pretty pleased with with the effort. Um, Outside of the last few minutes where it sort of snowballed for Alabama and, and looked kind of like a laugher at the end, was there concern coming out of that game that Alabama, I don't know, if struck, it never felt like they were going to lose, but maybe struggled a little bit for the better part of that game against a group of five team from Tampa? Well, I mean, this, this the concern is, and this was one of the big concerns in camp, um, you know, certainly one of, the, one of the biggest was concerns was the secondary, and, and they gave up a couple plays, and if, if Byron Brown had been a little more accurate, I mean, they they had let they let some guys get loose deep, but uh, it's a very you know young but talented group. But the biggest concern is offensive tackle because with the transfer portal and NIL, Alabama's lost a lot of depth the last two years. And you know, as you know, got Caden Proctor back late. He did not go through spring at Iowa nor at Alabama. He came back thanks to you know right tackle Will Conformy, his roommate, kind of helped get him back to Alabama. But he hasn't played. He got hurt in warm-ups the week before against Western Kentucky, and he's been out with a, a, a shoulder situation. We're not sure if he's going to be back. Uh, Kalen DeBoer intimated Monday that he was making a lot of progress and they may try to get him back. It would be ideal to get him some reps before the bye week and then before Georgia, but we don't know for sure. And so Wilkin Formby uh, has been starting at right tackle the first two weeks uh, after competing with Elijah Pritchett. Pritchett actually – Went through the entire spring pretty much at, right, at left tackle, a little bit of right with Proctor not there. But then once Proctor got there in June, all his reps were at, at uh, right tackle. He was competing with Formby. Seemed as though Formby was a little bit ahead of him, but I think that had more to do with Elijah and his maturity than it did the talent. Because if you watch the end of that game against uh, South Florida, the, the key to the whole drill was getting Elijah Pritchett in there. They were trying to hold him out. I think if you remember the game last year with Alabama and South Florida, Jalen Milrow was basically suspended and did not play in the game at all, was not available, would not have been available regardless. And he got the message from the coaches. He handled it very well, and he became the leader in the court QB1 the rest of the year. I think in, in some cases they were doing the, trying to do the same thing with Elijah Pritchett, but he was – because he, he had a quote-unquote ankle – going in but if you watch that game he asked to go into the game in the fourth quarter when they put him in the last three drives he looked like a future all pro nfl offensive tackle and he has that kind of talent and 
you know, what the most important thing that needs to come out of this win for Alabama is Pritchett to grow up because when he came in the game, Alabama went from not getting a whole lot of movement for th- over three quarters in the run game to just a bulldozer. Uh, they ended up – J.M. Miller got the most of his 140 yards uh, the rest of the uh, that fourth quarter, including a 56-yard touchdown run. And then, uh, you know, they broke a 29-yarder with uh, with Justice Haynes to ice it. And before that, the biggest drive of the game, the, the biggest sequence in the football game, it's, it's a 14-13 uh, a to 13 game at the end of the third quarter. Alabama fumbles – at the two-yard line. Uh, South Florida takes over. They can't move the football in the fourth quarter. They punt it. Uh, Cole Adams, Alabama's primary punt returner, went out with an elbow injury. And uh, and and then, of course, uh, Jalen Mbakwe, true freshman, five-star, he gets a 28-yard punt return to the 34. Well, Alabama finally cashes that in and scores on the Kobe Prentice 16-yard touchdown pass. And then – South Florida answers. They get down deep in Alabama territory, but Alex Golich had to make a decision. Okay, you need two scores to win. He decides not to go for it on fourth down. He decides to kick the field goal. And then Alabama had, you know, their big, their best drive of the game. They had inserted Elijah Pritchett. Jam Miller breaks two big runs. Then you hit Ryan Williams, who's been an electric freshman, who's already got three 40-plus yard touchdowns. He takes it 43 yards to the house, 28 to 6. Then here comes two two more uh, stoppages on downs by Alabama's defense, and we saw you know the, the two touchdowns where Alabama puts the game away 42-16. So, but the, the most important thing that came out of that is Pritchett needs to grow up, and if Alabama's going to go on the road and whip a, a solid Wisconsin team that has been solid but unimpressive over Western Michigan, uh, and which I believe is a, a 28-14 game, something like that, and then North, excuse me, South Dakota. 27 to 13. If they're going to win on the road and win impressively, they got to at least have Elijah Pritchett at right tackle, uh, or excuse me, left tackle, pardon me, because if uh, if Caden Proctor's not available, he'll be playing uh, left tackle. But if Caden's available, it'll be Caden Proctor at left tackle and and certainly uh, Elijah Pritchett at right. But I'll just have to see that to believe it, uh, you know. But again, uh, Elijah needs to be at one of those tackle spots. And then if he is at left, then they're going to need a better performance out of Wilkin Formby, who had four holding penalties. But I'll just say this. Uh, I've been around a long while. I'm doing this. You have to. The officiating crew wasn't great on Saturday, and they were flag happy on both sides. It's just the way they called the game. And I think Wilkin Formby will be fine. But, uh, you know, I just think overall, though, what came out of that is Alabama's got to get healthy along the offensive line because they just don't have enough quality depth available that's ready to play because there are other two young tackles. Miles McVay has played some and Texas A&M transfer. Naquil Veteran has played, but they're not ready yet. And really, Wilkin Formby has, still has a ways to go. Elijah Pritchett and Caden Proctor. Proc needs to get healthy and, and Pritchett needs to grow up. And that has to be Alabama's tackle combo. Maybe we'll see it for the first time this season in Camp Randall. And if we do, then maybe we see Alabama's best performance because those guys have to be healthy if this Alabama football team is going to make a run in an SEC championship and a college football playoff bird. Yeah. You mentioned that decision by Golish. I've seen that work before. I understand the logic. I, I was actually in uh, – I was in Doak uh, Campbell when when Tyler Van Dyke was playing, and, and Florida State was in the same situation. They were down, yeah. uh, down, down eight, kicked the field goal. We were all cussing them out. <laughs> and then they, they got, but they, then they got the stop. Right. And that's the, you know, what they got the stop, they got the ball back. They scored a touchdown to win. Um, USF couldn't get the stop. And then once Alabama scored to make it a two score game, uh, it, it felt like all of the air went out. Um, speaking of him, speaking of Tyler Van Dyke, uh, trying to kind of reinvent his career there at, at, at Wisconsin. Um, but I, I kind of agree with you. I, I do think that, you know, I, I think he's been fine so far competition level, you know, certainly in consideration that they've, you know, who they've played against, but it, it is tough for me to see him having a ton of success um, against this Alabama defense. Well, and I thought Alabama's defensive line controlled the game. They, 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 Alabama's offensive line lost the battle to South Florida and, and Todd Orlando on that side of the ball. But on the other side, I felt like Freddie Roach's group that controlled South Florida. Now, some people will talk about the rushing yards, but a lot of that was Byron Brown. Some of, in many in many cases, broken plays. Kid's a great athlete. He's not a great passer. He hurt Alabama with his legs. But as you both, as you know, the key defensively is point. 
How many points did you allow? Well, uh, I'll use a hockey term. Alabama's defense stood on its head and then and played well in the red zone. They forced three field goal uh, field goals and then also a miss. So there was four field goals attempted. Three were good. Uh, so they scored nine points. And then the only time that the defense didn't get off the field or force a, a field goal attempt was after the, the Jam Miller fumble. It was about a 39-yard drive. And, and Alabama did a great job on third down. They held South Florida to two for 18. But one of the two was a conversion there that led to the short uh, touchdown run for the Bulls. And so that was the only touchdown they allowed. The key is going to be for Wisconsin, in this Wisconsin game and going forward, uh, this Alabama team's got to play well against the run. Um, I, I, I wasn't discouraged by the run defense, though. I just felt like if you look at Wisconsin, they're not going to have a lot of direct runs from the QB. They're not going to have a lot of scrambles. That's not Van Dyke's game. Alabama is going to have to get off blocks. And look, and we know Fickle's going to test their manhood, but they did a good job against Fickle's team uh, in making them one-dimensional when he was at Cincinnati, even though the tailback, ironically, was Jerome Ford, who's now – a starter with the Cleveland Browns who had transferred from Alabama, another Floridian that I know you're familiar with. But uh, Alabama is just that they've got to stop, uh, you know, uh, Wisconsin's tailbacks. Does Wisconsin have a, uh, you know, a Monty Ball or a, a Ron Dane, all the great backs that they've had, you know, uh, uh, you know, there uh, uh, in their history? I don't know. I, I, I haven't, I, I, to be blunt with you, I've not watched a lot of film of Wisconsin. Uh, but it doesn't seem to me, just talking to my friend Maxwell Brusky, who covers that team, uh, you know, uh, extensively, I think they've got a pretty good running back room. I don't know that they have a great one. And so uh, and, and so we'll see. But I just think overall they've had Melvin Gordon. They've had a lot of great backs. But I don't know that they have a great one right now. And I think Alabama, the, the first thing they've got to do is make Wisconsin uh, one-dimensional and then make Van Dyke have to beat him. He's going to have to have the game of his career – and, you know, the only path to an upset I see is if these penalties continue where Alabama's had 20 in two games, 13 in the last one. And then in this past game, they actually lost the turnover battle 3 nothing. So the only way that they, to me that they lose this game in Camp Randall is if they're sloppy uh, and commit a lot of penalties and turn the football over. If they're sharp, if they keep the penalties to five or less and, you know, they don't turn the ball over – I've I've got Alabama win this game 31-13. I don't necessarily think it'll be pretty at times because I respect Fickle and his defensive staff, Coach Tressel, and then don't forget he's got Alex Grinch uh, who moved over from USC and uh, replaced, uh, ironically, Colin Hitchler, who's now the safeties coach for Alabama. So I think, you know, but I think Alabama matches up well with Wisconsin. It's going to be a crazy crowd, though, and another small tidbit. This will be the first Wisconsin game where they sell beer throughout the stadium. <laughs> Big's so, a good one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they won't just be tailgating and be lathered up. They'll be lathered up in the stands, continuing to enjoy a great uh, a cold beverage. But Alabama's just got to take care of their own business. And the one thing I do think that helps them is if you look at Jalen Milrow's body of work, TJ, his best games have been on the road. He's yeah. played well. And, you know, if, if his supporting cast and his offensive line solid – I love the the the, uh, the Justice Haynes and, and Jam Miller combo at running back, and I think the receivers will step up, and I think they they can win this game comfortably if they play clean football. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. I think they if if they take care of things, they win going away. I mean, shoot, you mentioned they had thirteen penalties and lost the turnover battle zero to three and and one. It was you know maybe maybe a little not representative of of how the whole game went, but it still never really felt like they were in, you know in question, and they still won by you know three plus scores. So I you know they take care of their business. It's hard to see the paths to uh, a Wisconsin win, like you said. Van Dyke's got to go off. They've got to learn you know lose the turnover battle. Weird stuff. You know maybe maybe both tackles are I don't know, you know weird stuff has to happen for for them to not get the win. But you also want to just continue that positive trend as we all kind of know what looms in, in two weeks. So, Drew, where can folks find you? Where can they follow more of your work? Uh, they can follow me on X at DrewD977 ESPN. Our station is 977 ESPN out of Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, if you want to uh, catch us, we're talking ball Monday through Friday with myself and Scott Tyson, 7 to 9 a.m. Central, 8 to 10 Eastern. Uh, and if you miss anything, we have our SoundCloud page, 977 uh, at The Zone. Uh, and you can uh, find us there, Huntsville, Alabama, the only sports talk radio station in the Rocket City. Or you can go to uh, 977ESPN.com, our website, to find any of our content. And uh, we always appreciate joining you and talking some ball. And 
not a great a, a, a great slate this weekend, but I think Alabama Wisconsin is one of the more intriguing ones, and uh, Alabama trying to get a win for the SEC, which is five and six so far in these intersectional matchups. Yeah. So the conference needs to step up a little bit. Yeah, I think they get it, but yeah, everybody kind of intrigued to see. You mentioned Coach Saban being so good on the road in neutral site. Everybody intrigued to see every step of this Kalen DeBoer season for sure. So, Drew, we appreciate you a ton, man. Thanks for taking some time with us today. Yes, sir. No problem.